Welcome to Dying Generation. This is Bunny Williams and my co-host, Stephen Scott Norfolk. How's it going today, dude? It's going all right, man. I I got to take a shower last night and put on fresh clothes. Cool. It was like being caressed all over by a succubus. <laughs> it was incredible. Trust me, live in your car for two months, and you'll really start to appreciate the little things in life. Yeah, right? When's the last (laughs) time you you had a chance to take a shower, man? A week ago. So I was right. I was like that that kid on uh, Peanuts, you know, the one with the dust cloud? Yeah. Yeah. Pig Pig pen. pen. Yeah. I was like him walking around. People were like, God, what's that smell? Oh, it's him. Everybody run! <laughs> it was not good. Luckily, it hasn't been hot out because, man, when you're wearing, when you haven't showered for a week and you're wearing dirty clothes and it's hot yeah. out, you sweat like a whore in church. <laughs> it is not good. So I, I I had to go to Google Voice to get the number. Mm-hmm. Because I've only used it like two, maybe three times. Like I tested it with you once, and I tested it with Jeannie a couple of times. I'm like, that's it. So I don't know this number. It seems people can text to this number. And, like, I don't have an app on my phone or anything, and I don't really want one. So I'm, I, I, I just have this whole list of text messages. From people? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, offering like Asian massage and stuff like that. Russian, uh, Russian, Russian wives. Uh, here's, here's one. Hey, just ready your ad. I have no <laughs> idea what fucking ad they're talking about. Uh, another one that just says hello. Uh, here's the one that you're kind of thinking about. And I found this one rather amusing. I am a bi-Hispanic with a nice seven inches and tight ass. I like two verse. V-E-R-S. Verse? I don't know. Converse? I I have no idea. Lick ass. Fuck and get fucked. I might swallow. Do you have that number? <laughs> you could really use that right about now. Yeah, that 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 one ad that you were saying they read your ad. I placed yeah. the ad on uh, Craigslist to sell a car, right? And yeah. uh, put my phone number in there, and I received this text message from this guy saying, "Hey, can I pay you in PayPal? I have someone on the way over to pick up the car right now." And it was from a number in California, and I'm like, "Okay, oh, you don't me. even know where I am." <laughs> this is, that one was for the listeners, Steve. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've heard all my stories before, but this is all fresh and new to them. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, a couple more of I saw your ad kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is saying, still awake? I am interested and ready to be picked up. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a pizza. Huh? Sounds like a pizza it's, or Chinese it food. Sounds like a, it sounds like a pizza, but what I'm really thinking is that I don't think any of these messages have passed the Turing test yet. Yes. <laughs> I think the artificial intelligence needs to be, you know, just kind of worked on a bit, making it a little more convincing. Well, it is artificial. Give yeah. it a break, you know. <laughs> but then, but then again, when was the last time you ran into some real intelligence? This is a good fucking point. <laughs> this is a good point. Although my friend Amy, who I haven't had a chance to really catch up with and talk to lately, mm-hmm. well, I told you about the the tattoo fight she had. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but she has now, now come up with another idea. Or actually, it's a friend of hers. But anyway, 
this friend of hers created created a Facebook page, and what the fuck? It's something. It's something like say something douche of the day. <laughs> oh, doof of the day. Douche of the day. Oh, douche of the day. And and she's like thinking of, of doing a show out of that. Yeah. Of which of which she is posting like generalized sentences that will flame opinion. Okay. Ah, so like yes. She's she's only done she's only done one so far, but I can see where she's going, uh, and it is. Oh, it, I forget how she phrases the whole thing, but it's basically people on welfare. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's it. She just and go. About, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> go. And from there, she is hoping to get some real douchebag comments. <laughs> yeah, that's like there's a Facebook page, I think it is, or it might be a website called South by Southwest Douchebags. That's all about the uh, douchebags that show up during the South by Southwest Film and Music Festival in Austin and inundate the town with douchiness. Yeah. The fresh smell of douchiness. (laughs) Exactly. I saw this show on Netflix. Um, I think it's called UFO Investigation. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Jeannie and I were watching it one Friday because uh, that's when we like to have a drink or two and get high. Yes. <laughs> and watch fucked up shit. And Netflix has plenty of that. This show is is similar in style to like something like Ghost Hunters or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Except they hunt UFOs. Okay. Uh-huh. It's like two guys and a girl, and they are the most incompetent fucking morons <laughs> you've ever seen in your life. It's hysterical. Well, look, it's there are lights. Things. There are lights through the trees. Oh wait, those are our headlights. That yeah. kind of stuff. It's oh oh even better. I'll get there in a second. It's you know it's the kind of show that you find it. You watch quite a few episodes of it. And you're like really entertained by how bad it is, but then once mm-hmm. you stop watching it, you don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> you're not like uh, I gotta finish that series. Okay. Yeah. So they're doing they're they're investigating Roswell. <laughs> okay. And they like talk to like one or two people. And then they drive out into the woods. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is, this is their whole investigation plan to begin with. <clears throat> so one of the guys is sweeping with a metal detector and things like that, and the other the other two they're like looking under rocks and things like that. You know, they they're not taking like any kind of measurements. <laughs> Yeah, you know, looking for burn marks, or they're not doing any of this. They're just in a fucking field, wandering around, basically. <laughs> um, they should have so made a show them, called Cow Pie Hunters. It would have been more successful. Look, over. I found one. <laughs> Until they all rush over, and he yeah. says, "I think it might be metal." And I'm like, do you think since you were sweeping the fucking ground with a metal detector? <laughs> <laughs> it went beep. It's a good chance it's fucking metal. And they pull yeah. this thing out of the ground. They pull this thing out of the ground, and it looks like something off of Muffalo to me. You know, a little uh-huh. too flat, but like that same kind of, you know, just rusted piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the kind of things you usually find with a metal detector. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really kind of wondering, and they're like, we found metal. This could be from an alien spaceship. And I'm like, you think they're building a fucking starship that rusts out that easy? <laughs> <laughs> they have advanced metal technologies, for God's sake. 
you know, they have to endure the heat of entering our atmosphere here. <laughs> then they then then they find something else. They find a button. They find a button off of what looks like a military uniform, and they all get all fucking serious and look at the camera and they're like, "The military was here." <laughs> I personally barely know about Roswell. I've heard some stuff, you know. You know, I, I check in on UFOs from time to time, just kind of casually, mm -hmm. you know. But if you know anything about Roswell, there's no fucking doubt the military was there. They'll, they'll, the military will tell you they're there, they were there. It's beyond the shadow of a fucking doubt. So it's like, it's like, you have just found a piece of quote unquote evidence and you're all impressed in this which shows me you haven't even bothered reading a fucking book on the subject. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like they decided to do this UFO show and they're like, Roswell, what's what's this Roswell? We should go <laughs> investigate this. I wonder if anybody's heard about this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what it's like. Fucking funny shit. And you know what? I think that's a damning indictment of our educational system right there. I really do. Uh, an indictment of our educational system and the media. Cause and the media. Because they're fucking innocent on this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so have you ever heard of, like, one of the most uh, famous UFO, uh, I guess, scams or whatever? It lasted for like 15 years, 20 years almost, uh, called uh, the, uh, the Pleiades. It was somewhere Pleiades, in Europe. Was, yeah, it was somewhere in Europe, uh, Switzerland or Norway or something like that. And this guy had these like amazing photographs of these UFOs hovering over fields and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, for like 15, 20 years, people thought it was for real and stuff. And then whenever the guy was like on his deathbed or something, he confessed that it was all a hoax. But they were like the most yeah. convincing photographs because you couldn't see any wires or, or stands or anything. It was just some amazing stuff. So, yeah. uh, I think it's P-L-A-E-I-D-E-S, Pleiades. Well, Look at that, people. Kind of it's fascinating. That's kind of interesting because the Pleiades is where the Nordic type aliens are supposed to come from. Well, that's that that may be based on that hoax. Yeah. I I got a better one though because this was actually a Netflix documentary and I forget what the fuck it was called, but it was this guy. I forget what his original profession was, but he started, and this was like back in the 50s or maybe even fucking earlier. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and he would start writing up things about UFOs and shit like that, and he would start sending it out to publications as fact. You know? Yeah. So, you know, back in the day, I, I would imagine, you know, any of the pulp magazines that were around at the time, like the shit that H.P. Lovecraft used to write to, that kind of stuff. Yeah, during the age of UFO hysteria. Uh-huh. Pretty much, but, um, that and the atom bomb. Yeah. And he wrote a lot of shit that, that I recognized, you know. But mm -hmm. the biggest thing that he wrote about, you know, the big, like his biggest angle was the men in black. Oh, really? So... So he would write article after article about Men in Black, and he just started making his fucking living this way. You yeah. Know? Writing articles, sending them to different magazines, blah, blah. Until Very he did nice. a documentary where where yeah. he kind of, you know, he exactly was not in the documentary, but, like, he let it all go. You know? Yeah. So, like, the narrator would be saying things like, such and such told me. <laughs> you know, yeah, that kind of a thing. And he, he needed another paycheck. The best way to get the new paycheck is by saying, you know what, I made that shit up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you remember his name? No, no. It's hell no. getting old, isn't it? What's that? It's hell getting old, isn't it? Yeah. You don't remember yeah. shit? What were we talking about? <laughs> 
Uh, we were talking about the Netflix documentary. Ah, okay. Netflix. I think I've heard of that. We should investigate. We should investigate. We should. Yeah, we should investigate Netflix. <laughs> <clears throat> and every episode had them out in night vision, you know, mm-hmm. out in a field at night and filmed all in night vision. And they run around and they don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. They kind of do a lot like what you said, like you said before. It's like, oh, it's just a headlight through the trees, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, I just, I just suddenly made a, I just suddenly made a douchebag Netflix connection. Yeah. Okay. Netflix, Netflix, because it killed most of the video stores. Pretty much eliminated the film douchebag that you had to deal with every time you rented a movie. Oh God, you're not renting that, are you? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> Fuck you. Shut up. Just ring really up my purchase, you pimply faced motherfucker. I, I never really ran into them, you know. Yeah, but yeah, most of them were automatrons or whatever. I have very fond memories of my first video store. They oh yeah, back on the day when they were actual video stores. Well, videotapes and stuff. This one was a vacuum repair place. <laughs> nice that ready videos. And and they they saw it, you know. They kind of like saw the handwriting on the wall, and like we can jump in, <laughs> you know. They, they later became Blockbuster. Uh, no, but they had a store just about fucking Blockbuster size. Yeah. You know, and they they also carried like a lot of fucking underground shit. Yeah. You know, and like this was like the cap off the bottle for me personally. You know, and the guys who were running the store, they were like kind of into it too. So it was like it would be things like, uh, "Have you seen Blood Sucking Freaks?" Yeah, no. have you seen Slithis? Slithis, yeah. Slithis. Um, Snuff. Tanya's Island. There. They had they had How to Grow Sense of Meal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they had a couple of uh. A couple of uh, S and M flicks. <laughs> nice, very nice. These guys are cool. And then after they saw I was a regular, uh, they told me kind of on the side is like, if you see if it's not on new release, okay, mm-hmm. and it's just on the regular shelves, and you see more than one copy, we'll sell it to you for ten bucks. Nice. And I was like, cool. Because this was still back in the day when when they were paying like 150 a copy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that whenever you know? Star Wars came out, it was like $250. Oh, my God, man. I bought For Captain Star Wars. And I actually, I was telling somebody the other day, I actually saw The Empire Strikes Back before yeah. I ever saw Star Wars. Because really? The Empire Strikes Back came out in the theaters. It was out on video, but I didn't have a VCR. So I actually yeah. saw Empire Strikes Back before Star Wars. And then when I saw Star Wars, of course, you know, I jizzed all over myself. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I saw it's fucking Star three. Wars. Yeah, I saw all three of them in the, in the theater. It took a long time to, to actually get to see Star Wars. Um... So much so that I wound up reading all the books first. Oh yeah. Do you, do you used to do that shit when you were like too young to actually go to the movies by yourself? <laughs> yeah. Well, my parents went to go see Star Wars. They went. They went out one night to go to the movies, right? And I had been on and on and on about Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, right? Yeah. So they go to the movies, and so they had heard me talking about it, so they go to see it, and they come home, and I'm like, "What did you see? Star Wars." Oh my God! You saw Star Wars without me. I was like, "How was it?" I didn't get it, and I was like, "Oh wow, it must be like really deep or something." And then I watched. It, I'm like, "How do you not get this? This is Errol Flynn swashbuckling." Yeah, exactly. I know. I know the Force was a bit of a concept to grasp, but you know. My mom was into, like, mental telepathy and all that stuff anyways. You know, during the 70s, that stuff was huge. You know, yeah. the third eye and and, uh, and uh, mental telepathy. The Kundalini. And, and, huh? 
the Kundalini. Yeah, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember Ass? Ass, yeah. The uh, like yeah. self improvement, uh, positive thinking thing, and Norman Vincent Here's, Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking. Jesus, the seventies were a fucked up time, kids. It, it's still around somewhere. Uh, I, the Harry Krishna are pretty much fucking mainstream now. Oh yeah, they've they've got like kiosks at the mall. They really? don't. They don't even. No, no, I'm, no, I'm joking. Oh. I really need to work. I need really need to work on my sarcasm. <laughs> it's way too sharp. People say that to me all the time. Really? No, I'm joking. Sorry. Sorry, didn't mean to mislead you there. Here, let me lead you down. Oh, this they used path. to hang Just out take in my the airport. Yeah, they used to hang out in the airports all the time. It's a short jump from the airport to a mall. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I believe it's a bus ride. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty I'm, sure. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a bus ride. Or, you know, a cheap taxi anyways. Yeah. But so this is what I was thinking about the other day. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, our title, Dying Generation. In case our okay. listeners don't know, Steve, how old are you? I am just about 51. Okay, I'm going to be 50 next year. I was thinking about this the other day because I went to Taco Bell and a taco was a dollar twenty nine. Yeah. Do you remember when tacos were ten cents at I Taco don't Bell? Remember? No, I don't remember that. I remember when a pack of cigarettes was ten cents. I remember when tacos at Taco Bell. You could literally take a, a pocket full of change and mm-hmm. and just bloat yourself at Taco Bell. And now it's a buck twenty nine. I mean, sure, the minimum wage has doubled. You know, pretty much, but but everything's gone up by like ten times. I remember buying chicken leg quarters for nineteen cents a pound. Now they're a buck twenty nine a pound. Yeah. Steve, buddy, what the hell is going on? That's that's kind of how it was when when I was single for that short space of time. Yeah. You know, I, and we talked about this too. Like I used to go to the store and I used to kind of freak out because like I didn't know how long anything lasted, and fucking everything looked expensive to me. Yeah. You know, it's just like, good God, like almost four bucks for butter? Yeah, or really? six dollars a pound for round steak. I remember when round yeah. steak was like a buck ninety nine a pound. Yeah. You know? Jesus. Get off my lawn. So so I was like, I I Got to get a woman before I starve. <laughs> yeah, so you, not only that, so you don't have to look at the prices anymore. She just comes home and tells you how much it was or doesn't even bother to. You know, you just know the money's gone. Because, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's sticker shock big time. That's like my dad, yeah. uh, when he bought me my first car, it was a 76 Pinto, right? Right. And he paid $1,200 for it. And this was in 1980. And I didn't think I didn't think anything about it. You know, twelve hundred bucks. You know, I could make that. You know, in when I was working at the movie theater. You know, uh, minimum wage and stuff. I could make that. You know, in two three months, um, and stuff. But at that time, I did not realize that you could have bought a Toyota Celica for like thirty nine ninety five. Well, you you know you know uh, what my parents paid for the house on fucking Long Island, where I pretty much grew up. Uh. Uh-huh. Granted, it was a small house. $7,000. Yeah, my wife's parents paid 35000 for theirs, but this was like in 72 or something like that. 35000 and it ended up selling for like $185,000. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. real estate's a great investment, kids. Get you some. So you were talking about dying generations. Dying generation. Just talking about just talking about how much things have changed in our lifetime. I re- I mean I remember. Do you remember the the Texas Instruments first digital watch that had the little red diodes in it that made the numbers? Yeah, oh, most certainly, yeah. And okay, and it would and, have a stopwatch built in, and like that's about it. Yeah, and now Google has a wristwatch that has like all the no, Android no, 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 no. on it. No, no, no. Its first selling point was uh was it well obviously it tells the time but it would also but it wouldn't lose time date. yeah and it, it wouldn't would lose time and date. yeah and then those fucking things were all over the place 
Yeah. If you didn't have one, you weren't cool. Almost like the fucking mood rings. <laughs> yeah. So I got the I got the Texas instruments. Thank you. The From Mexico, Texas. you know. The Texas yeah. instruments, yeah. Yeah. It, and it stuff, only calculates just... in rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got an actual abacus hanging off of it. <laughs> but uh Yeah, the watches the watches and, and and what what caught me really fucking funny is like that all came out directly after Star Wars and or really fucking close if you recall. Yeah, oh yeah. So, so it was like it was like whatever we have that science fiction y get it out the door. <laughs> yeah, you there know? we go. Yeah. It was it was it was the the transformation between the age of the pet rock to the age of electronics. The digital age that we and came to everything, know. Everything, everything became a fucking electronic toy or game or something. Yeah, you know, so like, like Simon. Simon came out there. Yeah. I I had Merlin, which was kind of okay. Do you remember the uh, Mattel football game that was just those little red lines that would like bleep 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 bleep, bleep, bleep across yeah, the screen? I had a I had a race car game like that. Yeah. So you just had like the you just had like the the road lines painted on the fucking screen. Yeah. And it was one red dot which was you and you uh-huh. had to avoid all the red dots that were falling down at you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. One. What about what about Pong? I remember we were the biggest thing in our neighborhood when my dad brought home Pong. And really? all Pong um, all Pong was was the Pong game which was basically table tennis and then the basketball game. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And it was like, my God, this thing was like $300 or something like that, which, you know, doesn't sound like much compared to an Xbox One, but you have to consider that was back when Taco Bell tacos were a dime and so were McDonald's cheeseburgers and stuff. So 300 bucks was, I mean, it might as well be $3,000 today. Yeah. You know? Did I mention my back I, hurts? Uh, no, you haven't. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> my sciatica is acting up. That's but even even in the station, right? No, that's the elbow. That's the tennis elbow. Oh, that's the elbow. I mean, I'm getting uh getting uh uh what do you call it um carpal tunnel syndrome in the hand I work the balls with. So. I figured out the gun control problem. Did you? Figured it out. Yeah. It's finished. Yeah, I got it. I got the okay. balls. Okay. Don't worry, everybody. We're safe. We're good. We're, We're safe. Because <laughs> now you, you tend to be just like kind of completely against guns. I'm right? not completely against guns. I'm completely against me owning a gun because I would kill someone or myself. Oh, that's a that's a whole fucking different subject. I would never actually own a gun personally for the same yeah. goddamn reason. Uh, way too quick. <laughs> I think it's I think it's everybody's right to own a gun, but yeah. you know we we don't need fully automatic uh, you know high end assault rifles. Well, for hunting, you know, I, it's for hunting. Where I lean much more toward the Second Amendment, and first of all, Bobcat Gold Goldwaith is correct. It's a piece of paper; it can be changed, mm-hmm. you know. But this was written by a bunch of revolutionaries who kind of understood that governments go really fucked up. Yeah, but they and, were also living in the age of the musket. Yeah, and they I had also no idea realized, what was coming. Right. I also realized that point of view where where. For armed insurrection, we are horribly matched. Yeah. Okay. And then you got lunatics shooting up fucking schools and shit. Okay. So we make the guns so that they can only kill politicians. Ah. Oh. Kind of like kinda, I'm. I'm totally stealing my solution from Westworld. Okay. Where the gun would only fire on the robot? Yeah. Same fucking thing. Yeah. Same thing. You know, yeah. if you want to get into politics, 
and, you know, you want to run for office and you want to suck corporate cock and all of that, then you have to have this chip implanted. You know, the, the conspiracy nuts always say that that's what they want to keep doing to us. So anyway, you know, they can yeah. take a small thing, yeah. you know, tax-free. And then you'd have yeah, great want... campaign slogans like duck and cover. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So like, okay, so now, like, but, Suddenly, I'm glad I'm living in my car so that when this is released, the FBI can't find me. Exactly, right. I, I'll, t- I'll tell him you said hi. <laughs> uh, so, like, if I point my AK-47 at you and pull the trigger, nothing would happen. Yeah. But if somebody's doing a speech, I can get them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. See, I like Chris Rock. Uh, now, now my, my now my feelings toward Second Amendment rights are satisfied by that. Yeah. Because you can still own the gun. What did, what did Chris Rock say? Chris Rock said that the problem isn't the guns; it's the bullets. He said, "You know, guns are cheap. If you made bullets cost three thousand dollars." People would think twice <laughs> about shooting a motherfucker. They're like, oh, man, you, you're you going to get it, man. You just wait till I get paid. Your ass is mine, you know. And I'm like, I'm like that's, that's a really, really good solution, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also yeah. heard, uh, I think his name is Jim Jeffries, saying there's only one good argument for the Second Amendment, for owning guns. And that's, fuck it, I like guns. That's that's pretty much the only argument you need right there. I like guns. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, the, the other problem I really have with the argument is like, you know, if if we get rid of the Second Amendment, then I would bet anything, man, that you have a whole lot of politicians just looking around going like, the First Amendment is looking mighty fucking sexy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, is. You it, know. It, it just moved up to number one. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we we might have to do something about this whole free speech shit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like uh, the guy Jim Jeffries also said, you know, I heard somebody say, you can't change the Second Amendment. Well, sure you can. It's called an amendment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what that's what amendments are for, for adding and removing things that we don't agree with. Right, right. And yes, we can change it. You know, the world, well, see, that's where we get into the sticking point, you know. We yeah. have to find out how much the fucking world changes by, by doing something like that. Yeah. You know? And that's like the, uh, you know, if you outlaw guns, only criminals will have guns. Well, right. you can. If you outlaw marijuana, only criminals will have marijuana. Can we use that argument, too? It sounds pretty good. I think we could use that. I think we could use that. I think we could. Since, since like, what, like 60% of the prison population or some shit like that is in for marijuana-related offenses? I'd have to look it up, but I, sounds I about can't right. Believe, I can't believe how we are tolerating in this country the privatization of the fucking prison systems. That's, like, the sickest thing I've ever fucking heard. Oh yeah, because you have to generate clientele. Exactly. And what, and, and what do you do? You, you you vilify more things and more groups, make more things illegal, and you know because you got to fill up the prison. The thing is, the thing that about the privatization of the prison system doesn't really bother me. It's that yeah. you've gone from like the 1950s where there was like one person per cell. To them, like cramming six people into the same size cell. Oh, we have prison overcrowding. Hey, you're making mm-hmm. billions. Build more prisons. Mm-hmm. You know, stop, stop, see, stop creating an environment that is turning these people into violent animals, and, and then releasing them out into society. It's for rehabilitation. I mean, yes, it's for punishment, but the punishment is supposed to be that you're confined, not that you're being raped and tortured, mm-hmm. and you know, possibly murdered. That's you know, that's revenge. That's not you know. Well, ha- have have I ever told you my solution to the whole prison system? 
Kill them all. And I had this. I had this one. I had this one years ago. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's not like just coming out now because I'm high. So what we do, we don't privatize it. That's just oh, fucking stupid. And again, I don't, yeah. I don't know why we're accepting accepting it. We militarize it. Okay. And what I mean is, like, we, we've had more than enough studies done that show that prison guards eventually become abusive. Yes. You know, we know this. This is a fact. So why are we still doing that, first off? You yeah. Know, you take the guys who are rotating out of the Army, okay, mm-hmm. who were probably just all getting shot at, and they become the guards. Uh-huh. We generally have a fresh supply of people rotating out of the army where I think this is feasible. Yeah. Okay. So now we've kind of eliminated, and they do like, what, three months? Something like that? Two, three months? Mm-hmm. While they're getting reacclimated with the world and, you know, everything that, everything we can do to counteract the damage that people from war come back with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and then the prisoners, okay, we have to get rid of the overpopulation for this to really work, but all the prisoners have to wear masks. Have to wear like masks? In TH, like in THX 1138? Yeah, why? Okay. So that they are not able to really identify each other as well. Okay. Yeah. So that so that the prison system does not become um, the crime school it's it's always been. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And instead of more. having instead of instead of having uh, numbers on their uniforms, they could just have barcodes. So they because they identify somebody by their number. Oh, go, there goes uh, TMY three seven eight. Stab him. Yeah. Now, yeah. I heard an interesting thing recently. There's a report that says that the psychological profile of police officers is almost right. identical to the psychological profiles of criminals. I I saw something like that, but I didn't give it a close enough look, so I don't know if it was like from a credible source or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I, I believe times. it. I've 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 met enough uh, police officers to know because. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but but a lot of I'm not saying all. You know, there are some good police officers out there, but a lot of police officers become police officers because they were criminals as teenagers and saw all the shit that cops got away with and was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm going to be a cop." Yeah, you know. And then there are yeah. those who join the force because of the family tradition. Well, if you if you remember in the seventies, that was like just a big motif in movies yeah, oh, yeah. and in television shows. It yeah, the anti-hero, dirty cop. Well, yeah. well, yeah, the anti-hero certainly. Like you know, in particular, Scrip- Serpico kicked off a lot of it. You yeah. know, where where the story was just about the dirty cop. Yeah. You know. And there were a few others like that, and then, you know, Kojak must have done it, Beretta, you know, all that shit, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. The the the, the playing, it, playing it from the hip. Yeah. Kind of mm-hmm. cops. They don't, they don't obey the rules. They are the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it was about Kelly Savala sucking on that sucker all the time that made me so horny. It made you horny? It made me mm-hmm. horny. I don't know if it was bald head or just the, the continuous sucking motion. Uh, when did you have I, your first hustler? Have I said too much? When, when have you seen your first hustler magazine? Actually, I saw a gay porn magazine before I ever saw a regular porn magazine. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because it was called an called uh, called called Hot Ed. Yeah. Yeah. It was an ad in Hustler for cock-shaped lollipops, and it was there you the, go. the back of a bald man's head holding it up. Yeah. So, you know, that'll sex it up a bit. That that will, yeah. That's a little subliminal right there, isn't it? Well, I don't even know if that's subliminal. That's, that's pretty much right in your face. But another reason I wanted to call this dying generation 
was like I had several reasons for that name, which is kind of why I was really glad that you liked it. Uh, is that I, I I feel like we're the last generation who is going to know what America was, and even oh, yeah. then, America was not a fucking paradise. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it, it, everything was different. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like I pulled, I pulled off of YouTube uh, the Walter Cron- Cronkite broadcast of Woodstock. Oh yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't really Walter Cronkite. You know, they had a guy on the scene. You know. Mm-hmm. But like, this is the most even-handed, just the facts, dragnet kind of news that like I fucking miss. You know, they didn't even, they didn't mention all of the people taking drugs at Woodstock or anything like that. It's, it was really kind of like a bunch of young people. Yeah. Put on this having a good time. Festival. Yeah. And then, at, and then at, at like Woodstock 99 or whatever it was, uh, yeah. at, at the, the, the third day or whatever, at the end of the day, there were like mass riots and people being gang raped and all kinds of shit like that. I'm like, well, you know, as long as we keep in the spirit of the original, <laughs> really? you know. No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, oh yeah, it was a big mess. It was a nightmare. I, I almost took my daughter to that, and she would have been 11 years old. I'm like, great, you know, I could have got my daughter gang raped, you know, at, at what should have been the greatest experience of her life. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but you know they had that. Happy much birthday, money. honey! <laughs> exactly. Don't scream; it only excites them. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, I like Dying Generation because uh, you know uh, you and I possibly could live to be eighty-five, but those kids, uh, the millennials. They could live to be a hundred and something because of yeah. medical advances and stuff. And so, I mean, you know, eventually it's going to come to the point, uh, generation two, three from now, when you know people are living those biblical ages, you know, three hundred and something years. I want to know how they were counting years back then. Because wasn't Moses supposed to be like three hundred and something years old? Uh, yeah, they were. They in the Old Testament, they were all very long lived. Yeah, you know, with Methuselah being like the oldest, it's something like eight hundred, but they all seem to range from about three hundred to seven hundred. Yeah, desert living apparently is very good for you. But it's great for the skin. It is because you know that that wind kicks up a bit. Yeah, oh, the best defoliator ever. You know, <laughs> it will exfoliate the skin right off your bones. <laughs> so that was another reason. Another reason is that is that we are old, and I think it's just like time to kind of be like give up any notions of changing the world or anything like that, yeah. and just be like you know, let the fucking kids take it now. <laughs> yeah. <You know? clears throat> I'm you just know, gonna just sit like, back in my recliner. Yeah, you know, you 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 figure out racism and you figure out, you know, gay marriage and you figure all that shit out and just pop me a meme. <laughs> exactly. Know? The best meme wins. <laughs> the best meme wins. I mean, yeah, we 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 we. I mean, you know, in our generation, it 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 was full length news stories. And then during the 80s, it became sound bites, and now it's memes. Now we're down to, like, a sentence to, yeah. uh-huh. to you know, to, to discuss a social wrong, you know, <laughs> yeah. with, a, with, a, with, a, with a funny picture to go along with it, of course. So while you're thinking seriously about the social issue, you're giggling a little bit, too. Yeah. You know. Like this if you hate cancer. Yeah, exactly. You know, the one I liked was uh, share this goat for absolutely no reason. I I do kind of like the goat whenever I see him. Or the uh, the uh, if you if you know some or if you're related to or know someone who was killed in the Death Star disaster, share this. <laughs> that 
That was that was one of my favorites. See, I was like, oh yeah, I'm sharing this. Damn rebels! Yeah, I, I I like sharing the most outlandish shit I could find. Yeah, and no, I don't fact check a goddamn thing. <laughs> that I'm, sounds I'm, like my I'm, friend Kim. I'm, I'm really not nearly as interested about raising consciousness as I am furthering the chaos. <laughs> exactly. You just want to stir the pot, don't you? <laughs> just want That's like my friend Kim. She she She's all about chemtrails and stuff. She's a member of the awake movement. People, yeah. be afraid. Be afraid. Be very afraid of the awake movement. They are the, okay. the greatest the greatest purveyors of disinformation. And uh, she's all about chemtrails, right? Supposedly the government is spraying chemicals or aluminum oxide or something into the atmosphere to all make us sick to prop up the medical industry, which is the largest industry in this country. So goes the argument. So one day she posts a picture that is a satellite photograph of the United States. And it shows all these chemtrails all over the map. I said, okay, there's only one problem with this. And she goes, what? I said, well, I said, if we can agree that a chemtrail is trailing out of a pipe on the back of the plane and is no wider than the width of a plane's wingspan, how come we can see the chemtrails but we can't see the planes? <laughs> I said, and if you take a ruler and do a mild thing, this chemtrail here appears to be 30 miles wide. When was the last time you saw a chemtrail that was 30 miles wide? Well, it, it came from a reputable source. No, it came from a source that you say is reputable, and I just proved to you is not, you know. So, yeah, watch out for the awake movement, people. They're uh, they're coming to get you. I'm well, Bunny. I'm just them up. Um, We're going to yeah, have to wrap things up because I have to eat dinner. Okay. And I can come back and we can record another show if you want. Okay, that that sounds good. So that was our first episode of Dying Generation. Thanks. Uh, we want to thank Bill, our one fan, for tuning in. Tell your friends. <laughs> and uh, Bunny, watch you, out, Bill. Huh? You any, Bunny, you got anything to pimp? Uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Okay, yeah. well, for the a lot listener, in the cooker. And I'm just trying to figure out when's the best time to roll out which thing. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, for the listener out there, uh, my name is Stephen Scott Norfolk again. You can find my books, The Alleys Ran Red, Dreaded Friday and Other Tales, a collection of short stories, and The Spy and Mom's Clothing by Maxwell Robeson on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle. And you can also find uh, my first uh, feature film uh, that was produced uh, from a screenplay I wrote with my brothers called Haunted Trailer with Rod Jeremy. Uh, look to your favorite uh, website to see if you can find that. Was that was that pimping enough? Was that just completely whoring right there? Uh, we could take a minute to whore. We're old. Okay. <laughs> I thought my whoring days were through. I just want to be loved. When school's out coming out? Uh, getting schooled? Getting schooled. Getting sorry. schooled should have its premiere in Houston sometime in October. They are finishing up color correction as we speak, and that should be the last thing. And you can find the trailer for that on the Indiegogo site for getting schooled finishing funds. 